as our next event. And we see Australia, the first team to enter. Here come the Netherlands. Femke Boll and Lika Klava contested the mixed event earlier on, got Netherlands through, not involved in the women's events. Italy go in five. Canada are in, uh, sorry, Canada are in five. Lane four will be Switzerland. Then come India. And on the inside of lane two will be Zambia. So four by four. Again, as we mentioned earlier on, we are getting these team declarations uh, minutes before they are appearing on the screen. So off the top of my head there, I didn't notice anybody who ran earlier on in the mix who's back for, for this step. I mean, they've had a... What, they've had a an hour and a half or so's turnaround. I mean, if they did, if there was anybody doubling up, is that a manageable time frame for two 400s in a night? I think it's, it's in the beginning of the season, it's very difficult to do both. Like, it's, it's a very short time. You don't have time to recover, and you need to go tomorrow again. I think that's one of the most important things. It's maybe they can do it in one time, but tomorrow again, it's difficult, I think. It's too hard for your body in the beginning of the season to do that. Well, in this heat, the uh, the fastest team on paper in the uh, the road to Paris, if you like, the, the qualification window, which has been going since the end of December. Uh, it's worth pointing out as well, there are 14 places in the Olympics available over these two days here in the Bahamas. There are two more places in the Olympics which will be decided on the fastest times that the teams have posted in that qualification window, which is, as I say, for the end of 2022 up till the end of June uh, this year. And on the... Uh, the rankings at the moment, there are some of the teams, for example, India in this heat are number 17 on that list at the moment. So there's a, a few that, if they don't, certainly don't get themselves in the top two, trying to improve their time and get themselves up the, the timing list. Because there are two places that will be available. Italy, well, they are seventh on that list at the moment, so they won't have any problems, you wouldn't have thought, in getting through here. But Netherlands are the fastest team in the qualification window so far. And when you've got the likes of Femke Boll and Lika Klava and others who can, you can call on, obviously not in this quartet, then it's uh, no real surprise here to see them at the top of the rankings. But they'll have Evelina Solberg to Merta van der Schut to Lizanna Bitter and Kathleen Peters on the final leg for Netherlands. Australia, Alana Jukic. There's their opening leg runner, Bendira Aboya. Ellie Beer on their second leg has run 51-5 this year to Australia we've had a, a good night so far hey. call room Great Britain getting ready as Lena Nielsen there we saw Lavia Nielsen in the, uh, the mixed relay earlier on Lena Nielsen the twin sister it looks like she's lining up in this uh, well, I can tell you she is lining up in this uh, women's event along with Dominican some of her teammates, Nicole Newman, hey! Dominican Republic. Also getting ready. Hello, hello, hello. Woo! Czech Republic. That's the live action in the call room behind the scenes. That is the scene at the Thomas A. Robinson National Stadium here. This has been redeveloped. There's had plenty of money put into it over the course of the uh, last few months to get it ready for this event. And here we go then with heat one of four in the women's four by 400 meters. Seven teams lining up. Australia on the outside. Bendira Aboya. Evelyn Solberg will take the Netherlands out in lane number seven. Italy have Rebecca Borga on the opening lane. Canada with Joey Zoe Shearer. Fourth at the last three global championships, by the way. Canada they can't quite find a medal. They can see a little bit of Paris on this occasion if they do. Coming in the top two, Switzerland are in four, then we see India in three with Vitya Ramraj on the opening leg. And Nidhi Mingalishi of Zambia on the inside. Again, looking at the full book and the relative strength of the quartets. Lanes five, six, seven, probably the ones to keep your eye on here. Canada there. So Shira leading them off. Commonwealth gold medalist from 2022 as well. On your marks. Italy and Netherlands. Mm -hmm. 
Still a bit of a breeze, which the athletes will feel into their face as they enter the back straight. Doesn't feel quite as gusty as it was earlier on in the, uh, the evening in the first hour or so. Away we go then in the Olympic Italy, who will get the back across first. That stagger will unwind after the first bend. Italy, Australia, Canada, and the Netherlands, the one, two, three, four, as they embark on the second leg. Italy, Ayamida Folarunza has the baton for them. Canada with Ayana Stiverne. Australia, Ellie Beer. And for the Netherlands here, it's Murta It's one of our first big competitions, so it's, for her, it's very good experience to, to be with these girls because the, uh, these are very experienced. But she's a little bit far away, she needs to build up to them. So I hope she will have a little bit more in the last 100 meters. But it's very close in the first three. Another very strong Australian leg from Ellie Beer in third position at the moment, but making good progress. Might even get the baton away first time for Canada and Italy with Giancarlo Trevisan. And Netherlands have got 10 metres to find here with the very experienced Lizana de Vita, who I guess will know exactly how to handle this situation, definitely. Yeah, but you see, Australia has really been very, very, very good. Like, oh, she's a little bit hotter. India are the ones charging for the back of the field, by the way, at the moment. Giota Sri Dandi is the one closing on the Netherlands. But up front, it's Canada and Italy in those two places at the moment. The danger for Australia and for Netherlands is that these two are going to sneak away here. But Australia still battling with Michaela Zalidinakos. Constant time and Trevi Sam. But Canada and Italy, Netherlands and India, not completely out of it yet. But a bit to do for them on the final leg. Canada with Alyssa Marsh take over. They lead by three or four metres from Alice Mangioni of Italy. And a blazing start to that leg by Canada's Alicia Marsh has opened up nearly 10 metres very quickly on Italy. Australia prowling. Alana Jukic has the baton for them in third position. And the Netherlands in fourth with Kathleen Peters, who is chipping away at those in front. And see that gap in just 200 metres. That's, that's crazy. So I hope she will make it to the finish line and not too early because she's really, really good. But it's still 100 metres to go. Australia is coming closer and closer. Alyssa Marsh committed for Canada, and she's hanging on at the moment. Italy and Canada are away. Italy are going to come past with the danger to take it. And Alyssa Marsh starting to tread water, but she's got enough of an advantage despite the fast finishing Dutch and Australia as well. And Italy and Canada see it over the line. Kathleen Peters bringing the Netherlands home with Australia. But a good run from Italy and Canada. Well, the job was to finish in the top two. They did that. But Lisa Marsh might have started to wonder with 80 meters to go whether she'd gone too hard. Yeah, the lactic was coming, but she, she made it to the finish line, so that's a good Excellent performance from that experienced Canadian quartet. As I mentioned, had those four place finishes at the last three global championships. But Italy, very efficient job. They have passport from Paradise. 25 is that a window? I think that would be a window. Somewhere. Anyway, Netherlands and Australia will come back tomorrow in the women's 4x4. Interesting selection now for the Netherlands. Femke Boll and Lieke Clive have got the mixed team through earlier on, so I think you can pretty much bet your house, Daphne. I've they will be in the women's 4x4 team tomorrow with work still to do. I think they will change one of the girls for Lieke Clave or Femke Boll tomorrow, because of course they want to go to the Olympics, so yep. they need two. And you can see if they're both not in the, in, the, in the mix, then it's difficult, but... Ooh, that was close. Ooh, yeah. But that's the difficult thing of the 4x4. Four four. You, you need to finish, you have the lactic, you are tired, and there are other countries coming in your back, so it's a difficult thing. Just, I think you need to stay in your lane and see what happens around you. Yeah, I think the, the ideal is that you maintain your racing line, don't you? And don't sort of, as you say, with wobbly legs, it could be pretty hard to keep yourself in a straight line when you've just uh, completed that 400 meters, but slow motion shots with some colorful local Decoration in the background of Alice Mangioni, who brings Italy home, qualifies them for the Olympic Games. Canada will be there again. Netherlands, well, they will have to wait and see. They've got the power to bring in tomorrow. World champions, of course, indoors and out, Netherlands. I hadn't mentioned that fact earlier on. So here we are, the jeopardy of the, uh, the world relays. The world champions at the moment are not through.
So some more further timing information here. This is a little look at how those uh, legs unfolded for each of those races and the purple highlighted ones are the fastest on each leg so the Italian team led out by Rebecca Borgia the quickest on the opening leg I mentioned a, a top quality second leg from Ellie Beer of Australia a sub 51 second leg there India well they were rallying but too late and then very solid from Mangione to bring them home interesting to see that from uh, a split point of view we'll try and bring you more of that information as we go through just to give a flavor of how the race unfolded on the clock the next up is heat number two of the women's 4x4 Dominican Republic stand poised Great Britain and Northern Ireland none of that team were in the mix 4x4 earlier on we do have one repeat coming up at least by the way in just a moment and you'll see it here on the left for Ireland Charlie Maudsley there's two actually Charlie Morsley and Rashida Adelaki both ran in the mixed less than two hours ago and they will bookend. In fact, they won't bookend. They were, they were in legs two and four actually for Ireland. Cuba, Ukraine will go in three and on the inside will be Colombia. So again, as we look at the, uh, the fastest times on paper here this year, Great Britain and Northern Ireland put on the, uh, the list to the, the road to Paris in the relay qualification window in terms of the best performance over the course of that time. Cuba ranked 9 and Ireland ranked 10. But Charlie Morsley and Rashida Adelaide can both perform as they did earlier on in getting Ireland through in the mix. Definitely then Ireland will be pretty confident of another top two finish here. Yeah, but it must be so hard to do both in, <laughs> in that short of time. But we'll see what they do. Give us an idea then. What are you doing if you're, if you're those two now you've run the mix four by four at whatever time it was earlier on quarter past seven or so you've got probably an hour and a bit to get yourself ready what are you doing in that time in between i, I think just try to jog a little bit just try to get off the lactic just blood flow and and stuff like that maybe a little bit of treatment a lot of good drinks uh, water but also like some minerals on it and just a little bit right for the, the energy for the last moment but you cannot do anything you just need to recover as soon as possible but that's difficult in a short time mostly after 400 meters of all there is charlene maudsley who has uh, had to get herself warmed down and warm back up again in that time as we talk about czech republic there on the uh, in lane six that's lordes manuel who will lead them out Another one of those teams, by the way, who've been in Florida training, the World Championship finalists, Czech Republic. I see a couple of the Great Britain and Northern Ireland athletes in the background as well. There's Lena Nielsen, who will anchor the team home, as her twin sister Lavia did earlier on. Victoria Hurigu, good to see her back in some uh, top form as well. Hannah Kelly, one of the most uh, recent additions to that Great Britain and Northern Ireland team as well. We'll go on the second leg for them. Cuba, by the way, are the uh, defending champions in this event. We go in lane four. Obviously, the 2021 staging of the World Relays was just post-COVID when things were opening up again. It was behind closed doors in Celestia in Poland. A couple of the uh, longer travelling countries, the likes of the USA and Jamaica, didn't send teams to that event. Which opened the door for a few others, including Cuba. Seen there to win this title last time around in Poland. Here we are back in the Bahamas in Nassau, the fourth time that this World Relays event has been here in the Bahamas. So we've seen Nicole Yegin ready to go on the, uh, the third leg for Great Britain and Northern Ireland. Ukraine's lead off runner, Katrina Karpiuk. Temperature still, as you'd expect here, up in the, the mid-20 degrees Celsius. Local time here in the Bahamas is just after 10 past 9 in the evening. Great spectacle under the lights here in the capital. Great local support as well. So here are the teams then. Dominican Republic on the outside, Milagros Duran will get them underway, Victoria Uhurugu leads off Great Britain and Northern Ireland, Ludus Manuel for Czech Republic, 
Ireland's lead off runner is Sophie Becker. <laughs> Melissa Padron for the defending World Athletics for the Champions Cuba. Katarina Karpiuk for Ukraine. And in lane two is Paula Loboa for Colombia. So on paper, the best performances over the uh, last 18 months or so have come from Great Britain and Northern Ireland, Ireland and Cuba. But only two places are available by right today in Olympic qualifying round one in the women's 4 by 400 metres. So away we go, on the outside, Victoria Uhurugu, tasked with the opening legs, a very, very strong start by Sophie Becker of Ireland, was relative at least to the start outside her by Lourdes Manuel of the Czech Republic, Great Britain, Northern Ireland, and Ireland, a relatively modest start by Ukraine right back on the inside, lane number two. Great Britain, Northern Ireland, and Ireland at the moment. And Cuba just coming into the picture, bottom right in the red and blue. To the home straight. Great Britain, Northern Ireland will hand on to Hannah Kelly for the second leg. Ireland have Rashida Adelaki running her second leg of the evening. Here come Cuba, Ukraine. As Hannah Kelly gets the baton ahead of Rashida Adelaki. Cuba have Rosemary Almanza on the third leg. Ukraine, and they're back on to Tetiana Karashuk. Czech Republic with Marcella Pirkova in the blue and white, currently in fifth position. And right on the outside, Dominican Republic come next, Martina Martinez as the batter, uh, the batter for them. Hannah Kelly at the moment with a commanding lead for Great Britain. And it's very smooth for Great Britain. Like they're bringing a really nice, relaxed it looks like that, and that, of course it's not, but it's like the island as well. Kelly would have expected to come under some attention from Rashida Adelaki, but these two are a long way clear at the moment of Cuba. But Adelaki finishing strongly. You would have wished she'd run another 400 leg a couple of hours ago. She passes on to another of their very experienced relay runners, Phil Healy. Nicole Yeagan tearing up to her for Great Britain, Northern Ireland. The Ukraine have moved themselves up into third position now, ahead of Cuba and the Czech Republic. Ukraine with Victoria Kachuchuk. In third position, it's Ireland and Great Britain and Northern Ireland. These two now are probably 30 metres clear of the rest. They're going fast. Wow, the gap is huge for like just the two of them. So if they can make it, like, it looks like we get the more and more and then I'll help them closer. It's like, wow, wow. Well, this is a race within a race. Now there'll be a bit of pride up the grounds here as well between these two squads. Know each other very well, they will compete regularly against each other as well. So, Bill Healy has the baton on to Charlene Mortley for Ireland. Rolina Nielsen, the 400 metre hurdler, has the baton for Great Britain and Northern Ireland. And the gap is 40 metres, I reckon, to, to Ukraine for Cuba for Czech Republic 5. The other two teams are still going to the Republic Republic in Colombia. It's like they can push each other because we have two teams, Great Britain and Ireland, and they can push each other to be a big finish.
Second leg of the evening is Natalia Kerr on the left hand side there. She'll run the anchor leg for Poland here. France going lane five. Germany in four. And then we have Spain who will go in lane three. And on the inside in lane two will be the Kenyans. Well, if Natalia Kazimierz is feeling anything in her legs, definitely. She's just got to look at how Charlie Maudsley and Rashida Adelaide have just performed to know that it it's perfectly possible to run another blinding leg, so Kazmarek will try and bring them home. Yeah, I will not be surprised because I was a little bit surprised in the last one, but you can see it. they can do it. <laughs> a far 100 meters, it's a different story, but oh, I love it. It's possible and that's really cool. The 49.48 uh, split for Adelaide really is something. We'll try and, I'm going to try and look up the split from the, uh, the mix really earlier on as well, if I can find that uh, information which I'm just looking for now, uh, while we're looking at the Spanish team. Uh, just a brilliant performance, the Germans here. Uh, Rashida Adelaide's split earlier on was 49.64. So she's run two 49 second legs in the space of an hour and a half or so. Wow. Wow, wow. What can I say about that? That's crazy. That is, that is absolutely mad. She's in a really good form then, and that's nice in the Olympic oh, yeah. area. Again, just briefly scrolling down the, uh, the list. I can't off the top of my head see anybody else who ran a sub-50 female leg in the mix relay earlier on either. I mean, for example, the fastest American was Lina Roby Jackson with 50-03. So, yeah, that just, again, puts us into some perspective. But here are the Polish team. Marika popovic Strapala will lead them off. There is Cherokee Young to get things moving for 
Jamaica. In this event, Jamaica, the world silver medalist, the Olympic bronze medalists. Botswana. They will go in lane eight. They have Nancy Botswani on the first leg. Again, the Jamaica look at those who've been at major championships before in this team today. They've got Janelle Bromfield. Renisha McGregor as well, part of the Olympic bronze medal winning team. Janine Russell is also here, but isn't in this lineup today. But Bromfield and McGregor, two of the uh, Jamaican lineup, who are part of that Olympic bronze medal winning team. The Olympic silver medalist Poland with Natalia Kazmarek. Haven't seen Justina Sviti Esetic in either of the Polish teams today. She is here on the squad, but so far not selected for either of those events today. We will see that some, some teams have got big squads and will rotate depending on what happens today. We've talked about the selection decisions they'll make. And some, like the Netherlands, will have to change their plans depending on what's happened already today. So those athletes on the third leg. Janelle Bromfield just in the shot a moment ago. Two more heats of the women's 4x4, four four, and then we're back into the men's 4x4 four four to conclude Olympic qualifying round one. We will have eight teams qualified in every single event by the end of play here. Gisera and Rahab Dirangu. Can you the African Championships silver medalist from the last staging of that event? They go in two. Jamaica and Poland would be the favourites on paper in this one. France and Germany looking to get themselves involved in those top two positions. The last heat was an absolute cakewalk for the leading two. Will this one be a little bit more competitive? So Cherokee Young, one from the right-hand side for Jamaica. And again, good target for Marika Popovic Jabala of Poland. Jamaica already closing down on Botswana outside there. Poland sticking pretty closely to them down the back straight. And also France on their inside. On the opening leg, Shana Karevo. Those three at the moment have opened up quite a sizable gap on the rest. Germany struggling to stay in contention through this first 300 metres with Luna Bauman. France might just about have the advantage at the moment. As the stagger will unwind, Poland finishing strongly though with Popovic, Drapala, Bromfield, sorry, Cherokee Young about to hand on to Ashley Williams, just rallying slightly Jamaica towards the end of their leg. And almost a blanket between the three of them there. Let's see as the stagger unwinds, as France looks to have the advantage possibly on the inside, but Jamaica have gone out quickly on this second leg with Ashley Williams. She's opened up a gap. France is really doing really good because she is closing the gap to Jamaica, into, like, next to the Poland, that's very good. If she can keep going on Poland, it would be really good for France. Jamaica, Poland, second leg, runner, King Agatska, coming up onto the shoulder now of Ashley Williams. France still right in contention with Fanny today. And also we're seeing Spain reattach themselves to the leading three. Good leg from Berta Segura, has thrown them into contention. Jamaica paying the price for that fast first 200 metres, tying up. And in the end, Poland have opened up a five metre advantage at the handover from France and Jamaica, having had a commanding lead now back in third. France is doing really, really good because she is closing the gap to Poland, but she needs to watch out for the last 100 metres because you never know when luck is coming. But she's trying to go for it. Alicia Bruna Kotepska has been passed by France and Diana Iskay, Janelle Bromfield using her experience up onto the shoulder, but Poland are rallying. Managing to cut off Jamaica there, coming into the home straight. Spain in fourth, and the rest of miles behind. So only two places up for grabs. This could be a thrilling final leg. France again chasing the passport to Paris at the home Olympics. Poland 
France and Jamaica and Spain have some work to do. The baton with Poland is in the hand of Natalia Kazmarek, the world silver medalist, running her second leg of the evening. France, Camille Seri in second position, and for Jamaica, it's Renisha McGregor. Kazmarek having a little look across to the screen at that end of the arena to see if she's managing to open up any kind of gap. Charlene Maudsley was able to hang on really strongly for Ireland despite it being her second race of the evening. Kazmarek's going to be asked those questions now, but only if Renisha McGregor for Jamaica overcome that gap. Poland and France at the moment have got some clear water as McGregor got anything left for Jamaica. France just started to tie up, but McGregor, I don't think, is going to reel her in. And Kazmarek, looking every inch as strong as you'd expect the world silver medalist to do, sends Poland to Paris. France there as well. And Jamaica, not for the first time this evening, will have to come back tomorrow. What a great race for France. Like from the beginning to the end, it was so strong. All these girls are all running really fast. I'm curious about them, their time because it was really good. Well, we'll have a look at the splits in due course, but Poland again taking a percentage call there with their team to when you've got somebody who is clearly your best 400 meter runner and she says i can do two legs for you it's no problem i can run the anchor twice that gamble paid off because they weren't in a, a commanding position when she got the baton but she made it look easy in the end it looks easy but i'm sure it's not but it looks pretty easy yeah. Yeah, but her legs aren't feeling that easy at the moment natalia kazmarek poland are there Paradise via Poland to Paris. The French won't be going via Poland unless there's some cancellations. But they will be going to Paris. And again, great news. I'm sure the French Federation and the fans are watching on here. But this is the, how things stood coming into that uh, third leg. So this is where Jamaica here were really paying the price. It was Ashley Williams who went out very hard on her leg. This is the final swing into the home straight where Renisha McGregor for Jamaica was just tantalizingly within touch but not in touch enough. No, because in the two last 100 meters it looks like that she's going because she was so relaxed but the gap was too big I think. It was diff too difficult to push too much and then the electric is coming but great race from them. So back to the drawing board on team selection for Jamaica's women for their 4x4 second attempt tomorrow in Olympic qualification round two. We said they've got Ginny Russell waiting in the uh, the background. Confirmation, Poland and France take spots number five and six in the Olympics in the women's four by four. You want to have a look at the uh, the splits from the French team, Daphne? Whatever you want, we can serve up for you. Here they come. Remember, the purple one shaded into the fastest ones on each leg. So Kazmarek's run, run a 51 there, but that third leg you were talking about from France's Diana As Iske was the fastest of anybody. And a big second leg from Spain as well there, Borta Segura, running that fastest second leg. But those split times were noticeably down in quite a few areas on what was produced in the heat before. How important are times uh, on a night like this, Daphne. I mean, obviously, Rashida Adelaki will take some great confidence from running 249s, but I mean, records and things are nice to have, but here, just sole focus getting the top two. Yeah, that's the only thing with count in this moment. If you have the top two, but also with the 400 meters, if you do another month tomorrow, it will be very difficult in the final. But in the end, the first thing is to go to the Olympics. I think that's the most important thing for all these countries. And then later on, the final is, is important, but I think get the ticket that's one of the things that I want some shots in the men's call room as their 4x400 meter runners get ready but it will be the final heat of the women's 4x400 meters to come next you see Portugal go through Norway uh, Nigeria were due to be in this uh, heat by the way but Nigeria are not starting uh, USA Quartet just going through. Kanira Hayes, Bailey Lear, Nasha Robinson, and Alexis Holmes. Belgium, again, would expect them to be pretty strong. Brazil in three. So Nigeria did have a team entered in this women's four by 400 meters, but for whatever reason, uh, they are not starting. They didn't declare any team names earlier on. And 
and not on the start line. But USA in this one, Daphne, I mean, Alexis Holmes, she's been a, a regular anchor runner for them at major championships. Obviously, uh, we won't talk about the Femke Vol, Alexis Holmes coming together, which will remind you of uh, less, less impressive Dutch times, but that was, she was, of course, who was the athlete when Femke Vol fell? Well, it was Alexis Holmes. It was yep. the one who was uh, keeping the pressure on. Yeah, she, she ran a really good race in that moment because she pushed Femke that much that she, she fell down. But that's that's the hardest part of the 100 meters. But she is a very big talent as well. They were actually disqualified in the world final, the uh, Americans, for a, a baton infringement in a, a 4x400 meters, which you don't see that often. You see the, the likes of Kendall Ellis. In fact, Kendall Ellis ran earlier on. Kinira Hayes in this one, the 2017 World Championship Relay gold medalist. Alexis Holmes also uh, in good form this year, 50.24. There's another in form athletes, That's Henrietta Jäger of Norway, who will be going on the anchor leg for them. A few final thoughts for Karina Vanessa of Portugal. And their third leg runner, Juliana Guerrero. French in Norway, we've got hurdler Amelie Yule just in the background there, in their team as well. Henrietta Jaeger, I mentioned she's in good form. She's the number seven ranked European this year. With her 51 second clocking. And there is from the USA, Asher Robinson. Who will go on the third leg for them. So we look at the uh, the other athletes that the US have got here. Kendall Ellis, we saw earlier on. This is pretty much nearly their strongest available women's quartet from those who were entered anyway. We had Kendall Ellis in. Kanira Hayes, as I say, a World Relay Championship gold medalist from seven years ago. Raymond Lear standing by on the second leg for them. So the final tickets to Paris to be contested. Only five teams in this one with the withdrawal of Nigeria. Let's just say, by the way, Nigeria, because they don't start today, that also means they can't start tomorrow. So Nigeria, it's the only way you can't start tomorrow is if you are a DNS today. So Nigeria have passed up, for whatever reason, the chance to have a team in the Olympics, at least for now. We'll see if they qualify through the uh, the top lists in terms of their performances. Just having a look, they are number 11 at the moment on that list. They would have a decent chance. It's a potentially injury issue or something that is uh, is unclear. On the performances of the teams in the uh, the qualification window, Belgium are actually faster than the United States. Belgium ranked five, the United States ranked six. And the rest uh, are up in the 20s and 30s in terms of their position in the fastest times posted by relay teams in that Olympic qualifying window at the end of 2022, which will extend through to June. The last two teams, in addition to the four teams that we have picked from that top list. Portugal on the outside then. And it's not the way given up there for a second, but then eventually Josephine Eriksson appeared in lane seven. Kinira Hayes in six leads off the United States. Belgium, they have Naomi Vandenbroek on the first leg. Nigeria were due to be in four. Not there. And Maria de Sena. Lead things off for Brazil. South American number two, Annie de Bassi, to go on the final leg. On the mats. Five teams chasing two spots for the Olympic Games in the last heat of Olympic qualifying round one for the women's 4 by 400 meters. So we'd expect the USA, even with a couple of their main hitters missing, to be uh, comfortable enough in this heat. Norway with Josephine Eriksson. One from the outside, they're just closing in on Portugal on the outside. Belgium with the USA as a target as well. Naomi van der Broek keeping Kinira Hayes roughly in her sights, although you can see Hayes has opened up quite a big gap on. Belgium and Brazil on the inside. Strong first 300 metres from Josephine Eriksson of Norway 
on the outside. Hayes coming up on her inside as our great shots from overhead show you the gaps before the stagger unwinds after the first bend of the second leg. Norway, USA, and Belgium, Vanderbrook finishing strongly. And Belgium maybe just got the baton in the hand ahead of Norway on the outside. That's a strong leg from the first one in the Norway, but USA is going now. And Belgium is coming closer because the first leg was really difficult for Belgium as well because it's, you saw she was on a very small step, but now she can make it a little bit closer. So the second leg for the USA, Bailey Lear at the moment in pursuit down the back for Belgium is Hannah Kless. And for Norway is their hurdler, Amelie Yule. Again, those three are away from the rest here and away from Brazil and from Portugal. And that is the complete list of five. So this one is going to come down to the second half of the race. USA, now Asher Robinson is about to take the baton for them. Belgium it will go into the hand of Lifa Schoenmarker. And for Norway, it's Astri Ertzgaard who takes it on. And even just in the last throws of that previous leg, Norway picked up five metres or so in the changeover, but Belgium have quickly closed that down. The eyes are on the second and third battle here, Daphne. There's the battle. Because you see Luce is, is making a big, big gap, but it will be a really nice one between Norway and Belgium because you see they are both relaxed in this moment, so they don't push each other. Just stay relaxed and wait for the last 100 metres. Then at that moment you can push it. But America is doing a really good one and they have homes in the end, so you know that they will do a good job. Norway started to exert in second position with Astri Ertzgaard. USA, their final leg will be Alexis Holmes. But Norway just ahead of Belgium for this final changeover. And this is an all-European battle for that second spot of the moment. Forget about the USA, they are gone. And forget about the ones behind, they aren't catching. It is Norway with Henrietta Jäger in excellent form this year. In the early stages of her season, and Belgium have Helena Ponetta on the final leg. Alexis Holmes is running serenely down the back straight. They have trimmed the gap slightly to Alexis Holmes. They're not going to catch her, but it's Norway still holding the advantage, Daphne. Yeah, but see, Holmes, she looks like a run in, a run in a park or something like that. It looks really relaxed, but this one is really nice in the last 100 meters between Belgium and Norway. Belgium is coming. Norway at the moment, Belgium switching up the inside here. Helena Potter's seen a bit of room. Can she get there? Alexis Holmes sends the USA to the Olympics, and Henrietta Jäger is going to hang on for Norway. And Norway will book their place at the Olympic Games. What a brilliant performance from that quartet. Norway have never qualified for the Olympic Games in the women's 4x400 until now. And that's what it means. They are so happy. It's so cool to watch that, but it was a really good race. National record as well. Wow. Norway sent four athletes to the Bahamas, and they are currently lying on the track, hugging. There we go. And the first Norwegian Olympians in history in the women's 4x400 meters as a result of that national record. The USA got the job done really effectively. As you said, Alexis Holmes looked like she was having a jog down the beach here in the Bahamas. But again, times don't matter today. Save a bit in your legs because there's $40,000 of prize money tomorrow as well. So you might as well contest that as well if your top two spot is secure. And these are some of the stories that we would expect. The smiles on the faces, some of the surprise packages. Norway upsetting Belgium. So let's have a look back at some of the, uh, the key moments here. As you can see, it was very tight between Belgium and Norway. Norway always had that advantage by a few metres, and that never changed as we see Robinson to Holmes. It must be so difficult when you stand here, you want to go, but you need to wait because they have a lot of lactic, so you need to wait till the end when she's coming close and go, because I think you are too excited to go, so you need some time. Well, Alexis Holmes saving plenty in her legs there to get the USA across the line, but we just saw Jaeger, I don't know if she was drifting out, thinking she was trying to make it more difficult for Ponetta to have to run around her, but she actually left enough of a gap up the inside that if Ponetta had the legs, she could have snuck through. Yeah, but you see her in her legs, she's still relaxed. Of course, she had the lactic, but she's still pushing and pushing and pushing just to the finish line. 
the Belgium girl was doing the same, but she, yeah, was a little bit more tired, I guess. Well, step by step there, Henrietta Jäger knew she was getting closer to making a bit of Norwegian history. And she and her teammates, Josephine Eriksson, Emily Yule and Astrid Erdsgaard have done exactly that as they take the second spot behind the USA. Belgium, you would expect them probably to be right in the hunt tomorrow for the places in Olympic qualifying round two. Let's have a look at the, uh, the splits coming in a moment as well for how that race unfolded and just how...